Hey, what is up guys? Rockstar Team. Alright, this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to manipulate, you know, or rather how to get an image like this. You know, we got this image straight away from the editing process and we made use of this one and and the background does this one. Let me just open them for you. This is the background and I'm going to open the subject. Okay, look at this. Oh man, Florida. And here is the amazing car. We have, you know, crazy cars waiting for him. You know, we have this uh, SRT here. We have this uh, Chevrolet. I don't remember the car name exactly. And this right here is Shelby's uh, Cobra. This this guy, I'm not really sure. Okay, so let's just put Florida right here onto the background and kind of like help him release his new album called Drag. <laughs> Actually, there's no such album. Just kind of trying to make, you know, trying to build up something out of it. And here is the drag. We have Florida, we have his cars, we have, you know, it's a new single. And it's recorded in what is called Rebel Studios. And by the way, this is a fictional company. And this, wow, this is Florida. This is the name of the album. And obviously, all these albums contain parental advisory. So, that's what it is here. Okay, let's get to it. I'm going to go to the select dialog here. Select color range. The reason is very simple. The backdrop is uniform, almost uniform, and the subject is having a difference in the color. So you want to you want to create a mask where I mean you want to create a selection where you just select the subject and eliminate him from the backdrop. Now it's a very simple task. You just want to go to sample colors here and just click on this. You want to get a, a white on a black mask. So kind of like you want to uh, select all the colors that are present. You want to include all the colors. This, this, yeah. Now, if you can see here, process. Yeah, you can see here that white on a black mask is obtained. White on a black mask is obtained. Now, white region is the region where uh, you know is that region where all the colors that you chose are are selected. And the black region, uh, you know, are those colors which are not selected. And you can kind of refine the mask. Finally, you must get a mask something like this. Now, this region is the unincluded region in the selection, and this is the included region in the selection. So I'm going to uh, check inward. Now, what this does, it just selects the subject and deselects the background. So this is how it's working. Now, it did a good job of selection. So we just want to add whatever the parts that were just left out by this tool. So I'm going to go to my quick selection tool and then start adding whatever I just want. Here, I want to add this part, this part. And be careful while adding because uh, there's a good enough, good chance for you to add the unwanted parts as well. So, you know, take good amount of care while doing it. I don't like zoom in a little bit and and decrease the size of the selection tool, uh, you know, quick selection tool, and that can be done by uh, you know pressing left bracket, left square bracket. I want this to be also included, so this got included. The watch, the band, and yeah, here this is not required. So what I'm gonna do, I'll just uh, uh, do a the subtraction of mask, I mean subtraction of the selected part, and you don't want to you don't want to ruin the selected part, so be careful by doing that as well. Okay, this seems pretty okay. Type this one is okay. Just add it up there. And for the eyes, it's not selected properly. You want to include them as well, and ears as well. I just want to uh, kind of like you know get into a slot where it seems okay. Now this selection seems pretty okay, right? Fine. So what I'm gonna do, I am gonna uh, create a mask over this selection. 
now that we isolated the subject and the backdrop. So what I'm going to do to test my selection, I'm going to create a new layer and place it down the original layer and then fill it with a rough color, probably something like this, a dark color like this, which will help you identify whatever selections were, you know, not correct. I'm going to choose my brush tool. Uh, okay, so if you just click on the mask, open your brush tool and then select it to black, it will hide those regions which are not wanted. So for example, I don't want this, this uh, grayish tint there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to choose my brush tool, you know, and go to the black color there, select the black color, click on my mask and zoom in for that particular region. Now you can see the watch here and this part is not really. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to you know, change the opacity to 100, flow to 100 and start uh, hiding those regions which are not really good. Again, uh, take it to black, start painting there. want to increase the size of the brush because you can see here there are still spots of gray so that can be reduced completely here in the same fashion just check out for those regions which are not properly kind of done yeah look at this this region is not properly done so what i'm going to do i'm going to choose it to white and here actually the details are lost so to recover the details you want to choose white white and then start painting there, bring down the size of the brush, and then slowly paint there. And then improve, yeah, improve the edges there of the watch. Seems kind of okay, but I just want to go one level deep and then try to be as much good as possible. Okay, and you know this region is also good. So I guess it's it's kind of okay. The selection is pretty okay, right? I just want to smoothen up this region a little bit. Maybe okay. Let's just keep it just as it is, however it was. And and mind you, Control Z for one time undo. You want to do more than one time, then you have to make use of Control Alt Z. All right, Control Alt Z. Okay, great. Now, now that the uh, object, I mean the subject, is selected properly, here is the subject. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the subject onto the actual backdrop. So I have got my backdrop open in Photoshop. This is the backdrop. Now I'm going to just Shut off this layer and then use my move tool and bring the subject onto the backdrop like this. Now at first it, it seems really funny. We'll we'll get through this stage very quickly. I mean at least with our efforts, right? Okay, you, once you have uh, chosen a good slot for positioning the subject, okay, once you've chosen a good slot. What I'm going to do is you want to match the perspective of the backdrop and the subject because you don't want to, uh, you know, make the subject look like it's a complete Photoshop, RIP Photoshop job. So what you want to do is you want to match the perspective, all those parameters that you need to take care. So I'm going to, in order to match the perspective, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, you know, Rotate or transform. To transform, you need to just select Control T and slightly tilt it in this way. Slightly tilt it here, just so that it appears that uh, you know the subject and the backdrop are perfectly okay. I mean, they need to sync in, right? I guess it's kind of okay. 
and let me just uh, refer my final image there okay fine this is pretty okay i guess you just want to play around with the rotation just I choose control t which is the transform tool and just rate a little bit or you can just manually enter the values here rotational values but i i like to work with uh, the tool itself physically i guess this is pretty okay right i'm just gonna approve this orientation okay so the clipping and the positioning of the subject is done the next step is to color correct it and given some shadows i mean given some details and if you look at the original image we have some you know good looking fog there and we have you know we have there's there's a lot of stuff that's going on in the original stuff we have some text here we have the album art we have this parental advisory so on and so forth so at this point i guess the first step is to work around with the color correction now what i'm going to do is i'm going to desaturate the backdrop so for that i'm going to go to the adjustment uh, icon there and then choose hue saturation and then okay let's maintain a uniformity so i'll just clip on to the backdrop i'll make this only affect the the layer that's just down below this so i'm gonna desaturate the backdrop pretty much uh, you know just so it seems kind of okay matching with the image i'll just keep it 25 negative 25 and this this again i'm gonna go to hue saturation and then clip it to the mask and desaturate this image once again uh, this needs a good amount of desaturation probably 35 you know we are getting at a good point here i mean the reference point must be uh, you know kind of like just matching the both you know there must be a, a common point for both of these images in that case it looked really good okay 30 and 35 seems okay and if we want we can just alter these values you know we can do whatever we want once we have understood the operational policy of the image okay now what i'm going to do is i'm going to kind of like bring in the uh smoke texture you know i'm talking this one i'm, I'm talking about the smoke here right okay i'm going to bring in the smoke so what i'm going to do is I'm going to click on the hue saturation layer here and create a new layer here. Once you create a new layer, you just want to go to brushes and choose the fog brush. Actually, I got this fog brush from uh, Fluon and, and I'll link the brush in the description and give the uh, i'll give the rar file actually i got this uh, from from uh, fluon thanks to Renee for his amazing tutorials like i mentioned before that's very good okay so uh, i'm gonna load that brush here load brushes i have this fog and star brush i'm gonna i mean i'm gonna take my fog brush here and start giving it a good paint there uh like no i'm gonna make it uh white and then bring down the flow around 50 percent opacity around 50 percent and then start painting on that layer i like to keep it a white tint like you know notice that it's just painting to the background because i'm painting on a layer that's just above background layer okay this is okay and next i'm gonna this was a little too high right so i'm gonna undo this yeah this is okay fine i'm gonna create another layer on top of this layer and then slightly change the color because that's what is gonna add a new dimension to what we're trying to do 
So I'm gonna put it to a rough gray tint and then slightly do some good painting there near the car, so on and so forth. Okay, so we don't want to re really make this fake. So I just want to give a little bit of brush on, on the subject as well. So I'm gonna create a new layer. I'm sorry, I don't want to create a new layer here. I want to create a new layer on top of the hue saturation layer and then slightly decrease the size of the brush and, and, and just paint here slowly. Like here it seems okay. Too much of fog is not required. So I'm gonna bring down the opacity and fill maybe opacity 65. Fill around 70. It's okay. Yeah, so now he's fitting into the backdrop. Okay, now the next step is actually shutting off this layer. It seems funny right now. Why? Because this is what is going to happen. We're going to bring in some lights from the car, headlights from the car. And those lights must come in front, right? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to shut off this layer as well. So everything is shut off. I'm going to create a new layer and choose my white, uh, choose complete white and make it a zero hardness brush and bring down the size of the brush. Okay, now actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to sample the color from the headlight of the car. So this color. So to sample the color, all you need to do is go to eyedropper and then click on the color you want or alternatively you can just click on alt and then move around your mouse so that will sample the color that you just want okay now i'm going to go to brush increase the size of the brush and too much is too bad so i'm going to slightly increase the size of the brush okay i'm going to um, bring it down okay i'm going to you know start painting wherever i want here 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 this intensified the light one more layer one more layer this is like a good big layer so i'm gonna paint here right somewhere like this now this gives light to the ground and and last one more layer okay wait a second this is the fog again this is this is our light layer. Yeah, one more layer. I'm gonna create another layer. Now, this layer defines the spread of the light, right? I'm gonna uh, paint that and control T, that is transform the layer. Actually, I'm gonna all click on the layer and you know increase the size of the layer. Okay. Actually, this is having a very subtle difference. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to shut off this layer. Look at this. This just increased the spread of the light. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring back everything. This, this was the fog. This is one more layer of the fog. So let's just group them together. This is the headlight. Oh, light is here, I see. These two are the lights. So I'm gonna shift control G. This is what? This is light. And this is oh looks like I grouped the wrong one. I'm gonna ungroup everything and check out what is what. This is the light. Okay, this is one more light. This is light. Okay, three lights and two fog. One, two, right. So these two are the fog layers. So I'm going to choose all those layers that relate to fog. I'm going to group them. This is fog. Call it fog. I'm going to select all the three layers, group them, and call it light. Now, this is where everything gets interesting. Now, see the difference. Shut off. Nothing much, right? Well, seems okay. You want you can decrease the uh, intensity by reducing the opacity. Even for the fog, you can do it. 
for the group itself maybe around 80 seems okay now turn on those two layers we have florida the subject and this is the fog on top this is what fog on top okay so we have fog on our subject as well now actually we want to define light source Uh, you know one more light source like this wait a second I'm gonna create another layer here and bring down the size of the brush and paint it here exactly where we see the headlights and opacity 100 flow 100 like so and one more here and in between also would be fine right this that is the extension now look at this this is what is happening we have a car we have Florida in front of the car we have a lot of fog that's going on and we have amazing car you know everything seems really good but as you can see our subject does not really seem to be fitting inside the backdrop it is having a lot of white tone here we don't have much white tone here optionally what you can do is create a layer create a layer on top of this layer and kind of increase the whiteness just paint over there and overlay opacity very less around 15 percent or 16 percent seems okay let's repeat uh, the same pattern for the body entire body here here okay good now what I'm gonna do I am gonna uh, choose a curse adjustment layer a curse adjustment layer and again clip it to mask and this one also okay now I'm gonna increase I'm going to increase the contrast a little bit maybe little little subtly like this slightly okay this gives a little bit of more you know whitish whitish glow and this is the hue saturation okay so now we are all going it's getting to a good point right now this is the enhancement enhancement right okay as you can see this on top here we see some white spots right we want to correct those white spots it is from the selection look at this so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna bring the size of the brush down you know like this as you can expect I'm gonna take black and start painting on the mask for your information let me just even uh, bring down the flow okay, i just want the flow to be around 50 percent opacity opacity to be around 50 percent and then slightly move the brush you don't want to spoil it right so i'm gonna undo okay fine i'm gonna keep it 100 you know it's all about experimenting you just want to uh, take off the unwanted part so I guess 100, 100 seems fine, unless you don't get too much inside of the image. Okay. And slightly more there. Okay. And a little bit here, over there. And, you know you just want to uh, you know take off all those unwanted parts but you have an option actually you know an option that can help you retain small very small details within the image the reason is look at this 
you can just leave it just right there. Why? Because the light is coming from the back and that light is bouncing on his hands and that's what is making the region glow. You get me, right? You can just leave it at that point if you want. But if you want perfection, then you, you just want, you know, kind of like, it's okay to work with everything. Clean up the small mess there. Yeah, okay. So that's fine. I guess it's okay for me to keep it just like that. So we are almost done. I mean, we just have to give some lights, I mean, coloring and text. So that would be the end, right? So I'm going to create another adjustment layer. I'm going to choose a photo filter. Okay, so this photo filter, I'm going to make it cooling filter and bring down the density to around 15%. Right. And I would make it just go overlay. Oh, overlay doesn't seem fine. Lighten. It's okay, I guess, right? Capacity around 50. You just want to keep any effect in a minimalistic way. Because you don't want to, you know, you don't want to make it seem really fake. So this is a very subtle change there. And yeah, we want to add some lights here, light source from the top here. So I'm going to create another layer. I'll call it light. So repeat the same process. Uh, I'm going to choose this white color here. Maybe. Uh, <clears throat> okay, let's sample the color from the headlights itself. So I just took this blue, bluish white. I'm going to increase the size of the brush by, you know, by choosing the right bracket, and you know, just paint one here, and duplicate this by making Control G by choosing Control G, and then transform it. And while you drag, just click on Alt. So I'm going to drag it. Yeah, it's OK. Great. So this is one light source that's coming. I guess it's way too much, right? So I'm going to go to linear dodge, make this linear dodge, bring down the fill like around 60%. And this is what? This is the spread. Optionally, you want to color these lights, you can by going to uh, what hue saturation and then clipping out there. And you want to give it a bluish tint, right? So choose colorize, bring up the saturation, slightly move it towards the blue, and then now here's where you get tipsy. So this gives a bluish tint. You get it right? Yeah. Around 10% is okay, I guess. Yeah. And once again, you want to give some lights to the spread. You can do it. Go to hue saturation, clip to mask. I mean, clip to the down layer, colorize, and slightly move this towards around 25 and then bring it up here. So that's how you get this light. Right? Okay. Uh, now, the next step is I'm going to go to this and I'm gonna go to levels, go to the blue channel. This is affecting the overall image. So I'm gonna increase it. So this is what gives you a dynamic look. Well don't give it too much. This is okay, right? This is around 41. 35 seems pretty good. Right. So this is where you get very good. This is the direct black, this is the blue. So this light blends in with the background blue very well. Next is to create a stamp. So I guess this is all we need to do, right? Let me just refer to the previous image that I created. Yeah, I guess that's all there is to it. Fine. 
So great. So I'm going to go ahead and select Control Shift Alt E. So that's going to make a stamp out of the layer. Now I'm going to just duplicate this stamp. Okay. Now this is the uh, stamp. This is the duplicate. Duplicate stamp. Okay. Now here's where everything's going to get HDR ish. So I'm going to go and go to filter. Even if you don't select, that's fine. Okay. Let's avoid ambiguity. Deselect. Okay. Go to filter. Other high pass. So keep the radius relatively high based on your HDRS requirement. The higher the radius, the more HDRS your image gets to be. So I prefer to keep it around 15, right? 15 is pretty good. Change the blending mode to overlay. Now that's what gives you a HDRS look. Wow. Great. Now I'm going to go to opacity, bring down the opacity of this uh, of this layer, make it 75, bring down the fill to around 75 maybe. Right. Look at this. This is adding more details to your image. Whoa. Now this is what is, you know, what this is what is a situation. <laughs> okay. Now I'm going to bring in some uh, album art kind of an effect. So for that, I'm going to go to let me just shut this off. No need anymore. I'm going to go to uh, my image and I'm going to choose a logo. So parental advisory logo. Like I'm going to go go ahead and then drag and drop it here. Whoa. Okay. So I'm going to bring bring down the size of this and kind of like put it here so obviously to bring down the size i just chose the transformation tool okay okay i'm gonna hit okay great so it's okay over here this is pretty good next i'm gonna uh, give the title right that's where everything's gonna go so I'm going to create a new text layer and make sure you install this font. It's called Bubbles New because that's what I, I think Florida, Florida uses for most of his albums. So I'm going to go ahead and then start typing there. Choose caps lock, F-L-O, R, okay, F-L-O as one text. And I'll create one more text there. R I D A. Make sure both of these texts have the same size. And by the way, I had to tweak around to get this uh, text effect. So what I'm going to do, I'll just show you what you can do. Okay, this this is the text, and play around with this value. This is the horizontal stretching values. Look at this. I just stretch it way too much high so around minus 20 is a good value that's what I, I i have i usually use and this rida also it's having minus 20 here this is the stretchable value and the font is bubbles new okay now i'm gonna just line up line up these two texts somewhere here and increase the size of the text uh let's just give it around 40 maybe 40 40 seems good. Okay. And here it's 40. Okay. So everything seems good, right? Mm, just move it up over here. Flow space ID. Yeah. Okay. So this is good. Now we want to give it some metallic look. So for that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to File, uh, open up the metallic texture. Don't worry, I'll be including all these files in the description. I mean, I'll, I'll at least link the f description to these files. Okay, 
here the link to this file socket so this is what is the texture i'm going to go and drag and drop it there make sure this goes up there one i'm going to duplicate this layer i'm going to put this layer just on top of flo text now i'm going to right click and then choose clip to mask i mean yeah i'm going to go here and then create clipping mask I'm going to repeat the same to this create clipping mask. Whoa, look at that. Now, this really got a good metallic texture, right? So, that's how it does. That's how it's done. Okay, so let me just group these layers. I'm going to go select all those layers and then group them. This is floated our text. This is what this is uh, parental advisory. Uh, okay. The next step is to add some details to your image here. Look at this. Okay, so you can add whatever you want. This is just something here. Oh, we want to give it some uh, glow. So what I'm going to do is I want, I want to give it a glow like this. So for this to happen, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to open. I'm going to choose my flare file. Don't worry, I'll be including all these files in the project in the description. So I'm going to go and drag it to here, right here. And, you know, kind of make it seem like it's fitting in the place. And uh, change the blending mode to lighter color okay and now add a mask now in the mask we just don't want this black region this region we just want this uh, glow here and in fact i don't want even this region so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to the black color i'm going to go choose black color and i'm going to go to my brush tool increase the size of the brush and opacity flow make it what 100 over here 100 on either and then start painting here till here he is all gone okay this is fine you want to kind of zoom in and then start uh, give more detailed painting black okay so i'm gonna decrease the size of the brush and Okay, I just ordered it. I'm sorry. Right, this. Okay. Now, <coughs> what you really want to do is you want to blend this image into this uh, backdrop seamlessly. So, what I'm going to go do is I'm going to bring down the size. Okay, let us first take it about the top region there. And I kind of okay this is good and this is all there is to it now now I, I just want to blend in the edges so what i would be doing is i would just apply the layer mask okay now i'm gonna go to uh, i'll just uh, create this uh, convert this into a smart object Okay, now I'm going to go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Slightly increase the radius till around uh, 3 pixels. 3 pixels. Yeah, 3 pixels is fine, I guess. Yeah, 3 pixels is fine. I'm going to go give it OK. Now I'm going to go and click on the smart filter. Now choose my brush tool. Again, repaint it back like this right great now the reason why i did this why did i give this gaussian blur the reason is is because i can just mend and play around the play around with the edges so that i can completely take care of it okay now what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a mask to this layer and then 
bring my opacity and flow to around 100% both and start painting that like this okay you just want it to uh, kind of blend it properly and this region i just extra painted so i want to recover some details so i'll, I'll, I'll take my a brush and start painting with white get back these details that are lost great now this part i want to bring back so what i'm going to do make it black there okay just work around with the opacity there yeah okay it's like just you need to spend some time for a good result okay good fine i guess it's okay now what i'm going to do is i'm going to create another layer for the album title the album title is called drag d r a g <laughs> i don't know if florida is really going to create an album but I mean, I mean i don't know if really florida is going to release an album called drag but let's just <laughs> kind of like let's just do it right maybe it would be a fan-made album poster who knows okay so uh, i'm gonna go and then make it white for better viewing purposes and like change the font to transformers that's what i i have used in the demonstration transformers font yeah and by the way this is a free font you'll get it everywhere on the internet and bring the size of the font to around 30 yeah it's okay right okay just place it in such a way that uh, the imperfections over here must be kind of like uh, getting well blent by with the text or you want to take your time then just work around a little bit here and there and kind of smoothen up this is okay at this point right okay so i'm gonna go and place drag here like okay it kind of should blend in and now you can add texture to this as well so i'll go open my texture i guess this seems a good one right yeah okay this seems okay now i'm gonna go and then place it on top and then repeat the same process create a clipping mask so that's how we get this and now I'm going to group these two layers. This is for drag. Now I'll move the group itself. It's okay. I guess it's if it's okay. Yeah. This is fine. So that's all there is to it, guys. You just, this is not perfect here. What you could do is like work around with the opacity levels, with the brush, and even with the, with the layer. So you would get a result something like this so it's pretty good right okay so that's all there is to it guys uh, if you like this video give it a thumbs up subscribe and share thanks for watching the video okay in case you didn't get to watch my previous video